Mr. Jantua is still trying to see if he can say hello to Mr. Ahin uh, before we move on. You want to do that? You want to just, just, you know. Yes, I, I would apologize to him if I attacked his person. Okay. But really and truly, if he's doing his work, he should do it in such a way that people like me would not attack his person. Okay. And I apologize. Okay. Mr. Ahin, thank you very much. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are, are interested in um, commenting and, and sharing your thoughts. And Atai Moro has joined us already from Wallens. He says, Mati Amidu uh, should have... Uh, uh, continue his efforts to ass assisting the government in retrieving the Wyoming money. As an insider, uh, his efforts are essential. I hope even after this withdrawal, he will still support the current AG in the process. Musa Abato and Kumasi says, the allegations by, uh, made by the government is false. Is there a convenient way to justify the purchase of new Mercedes-Benz? It's needless, and if the government cannot find the cars, they should uh, they claim missing. They should also publish a counter list on the information. Well, that, that has been published here uh, on news file, um, except that we are trying to uh, ascertain the authenticity Ooh, of the document. Uh, so for your Musa <laughs> in Kumbu <laughs> says, the step taken by Mr. Mathamidu is in the right direction. After all, he is not just interested in uh, disgracing Mr. Woyome, rather, uh, Martin Amidu's interest is to retrieve the money illegally paid to Woyome. Nothing more, nothing less. Nanado led MPP government cannot and must not fail Ghanaians in retrieving these illegally paid monies, uh, he says. Akwisi Obeng from Ejisu uh, Bisiasa says, I am surprised some NDC communicators are defending their members who have taken state vehicles home. We should be patriotic. And Nana Boating, uh, Milton Keynes, Yuki says, it's about time this rumble and macho style of confiscating uh, cars of ex-government appointees during change of government sees if the Transition teams on both sides of the political divide uh, had done their work judiciously, devoid of any malice. Issues like these uh, wouldn't happen again. It happened in 2000, 2008, 2012, and happened again in 2016. If the current government thinks that uh, some state cars are missing, and with all the power vested in them, uh, can they not just invite the informal chief of staff of the previous uh, government to a meeting to help them find these missing cars? I think it's time... We stop belittling ourselves as country and start setting up systems that will work for the betterment of the country. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll read more of those comments as we proceed. And I need to share with you ProSecurity is a special formulated health drink that improves the following urinary uh, problems in men, such as frequent urination during the day and night, delayed urination, uh, straining during urination, uh, urgency to urinate, interruption of urine flow, uh, dribbling of urine after urination, ProSecure. From Medimosis Prostate uh, Center. Location Adenta Barrier, Tema Aj Kojo <coughs> or Ahenibak uh, or Kobe in Kumase. 020 814 are the numbers you want to call. Uh, install solar power today from the world leading brand, uh, Victron Energy. We install both off grid solar and hybrid solar systems for residential and commercial users. Uh, reduce your ECG bills by up to 90%. Free yourself from high cost of electricity and doom so. Uh, we offer five years warranty on products except batteries with one year warranty. Call us now on 054 112 Now, uh, on Valentine's Day, celebrate real love with uh, Afro sensational Becca at the Joy Prime Valentine Night Out, brought to you by Joy Prime and Alisa. Uh, the night features a chef's special buffet of delicious dishes, hilarious comedy by DKB, fashioned by Abrantia, the gentleman, and totally ethnic. Love renewals, blind dates for singles, and free gifts for everyone. Meet up with Lexis Bale and your favorite Joy Prime and Hits FM presenters, 14 February uh, 2016. Venice Elisa Hotel, North Ridge, 5 p.m. Uh, standard couple is 300 cities, VIP is 400, and single is 170. Uh, grab your tickets from Joy FM, Moti TV, Kukumimli, and Elisa Hotel. Uh, for bulk delivery, call 0244-340421. Joy Prime Night Out is proudly brought to you by Dream Cosmetics, Silver Queen Cosmetics, FC Perfumery, uh, Angels Beauty, Latida Fashion, Dodoa Pharmacy, <coughs> uh, uh, Hacho Limited, Nexus Home Appliances. See you, uh, Alisa, uh, for this fantastic uh, event that uh, I'm certain you want to be part of. Also, remember uh, that what do you enjoy most about facebook is it the hilarious videos those funny uh, uh names and pictures uh, comments messengers or simply stay in touch with your friends uh, you can enjoy all of this for free with mtn free after one 
pay only for the first minute of your, of your call on MTN Free after one and enjoy free Facebook for the rest of the day. Uh, dial hash, uh, star 315 hash to sign up now. Uh, terms and conditions apply. MTN everywhere you go. And as a farmer, landscaper or gardener, what has been your bother or headache over the years? It's about, is it about poor seasonal yields over the period or post-harvest losses due to short shelf life of your produce? Then you need ACAP compost fertilizer. ACAP compost fertilizer is an organic fertilizer made from pure organic materials such as food and farm waste decomposed naturally into humans, very suitable for agricultural purposes. It has very high organic matter, good water retention properties, ideal for all crops, including vegetables, fruit, cereals, crop trees, such as cocoa, palm, coffee, etc. ACAP compost fertilizer is available in all leading agro import dealers and distributors across the country. Uh, for inquiries, please contact 026-407-0080. 8102017355640 or 0243473158 and White Temple Agencies Limited offers you the latest technologically advanced trendy and durable yet affordable stone coated roofing tiles uh, that's fair roof a luxury you can afford we we have a variety of colors and designs to choose from our team of professionals will give you value for money and a guaranteed one year after sales service support all we require from you is a roof plan. Your taste in roofing is our ultimate priority. You can locate White Temple Agencies located uh, limited on plot number 65 Derby Avenue on the Children Hospital Road adjacent to NHIS Building Arena or, Arena or our sales office branch at the Old Wager Barrier at Crowd West. Call us on 030 2673 773 or 0243 284 859 or email white temple for you to at gmail.com. David. Uh, wrapping up on this important side, as we move on to the other related subjects, on the uh, committee that was set up to retrieve the vehicle and another uh, properties in the, in the custody of previous government appointees, do we know how many vehicles have been retrieved so far? Thank you very much. I, I may not want to put out the exact figures as I sit now, but I can speak to you on authority. The 3rd February release signed by the Honorable Chief of Staff regarding the committee put together in the tax force to go out there and retrieve those cars. The committee is really getting good results. In all these, I am sure this forms just a minute component of the governance process. However, if you have a team of 10 out there collecting cars that are illegally in the possession of certain individuals, of course the main government machinery is busily working and the government is working. But I can tell you on authority, it is a better approach compared to what was done previously, <laughs> where cars were snatched in Rambo style and all that. This time around, a proper committee... So, by you, so you can tell us if they have vehicles? I wouldn't want vehicles. to, not I can't. Oh, so tell us. I wouldn't want to Why? speak to figures, because as I speak to you, we know... You don't want to be contradicted subsequently. Off, off the record, I am being asked if you have the names of individuals in possession of the cars, put them out. Maybe we are going to be challenged as the days go by. We are going to put the names of individual Ghanaians who belong to the NDC who are, illegally who are still on to illegally holding onto vehicles. Mm -hmm. We will do so, mm -hmm. and then the whole Ghana will know. We don't come to such a big platform to spew lies like possibly the Honorable so John the had out. earlier, uh, you, know, you know, wanted us to believe. So what I'm speaking to you on authority <laughs> is that <laughs> the tax force <laughs> is really working, and they have a number of vehicles they have retrieved from those illegal handlers who had them. Okay. The committee is working. You talk about Rambo style, and... Uh, it's, it's an important point to bring in what has happened already. No, but let me have a take. Uh, well, no, it's, it's, a, it's, the same, it's the same topic. So when I come to you, you could, you could take it there. Because it's important. Um, this week, in fact, last two weeks, you remember the case of Kofi Adams? I do. Um, his house was, was, was raided according to him. Subsequently, we got verification that in five, five vehicles were taken away. Uh, in a, in the, a letter that was written to the IGP signed by Samson Lada Yenini, who is his lawyer, he says that when the cars were returned, he got a call from um, Kandapa apologizing. He's a minister for okay. national security. The cars were returned to him. He says, listen, I'm not in the country. Keep the vehicles at the, at the police so that when I come, I can go and do independent verification. Who knows? You're bringing the cars. There might be something that might, that might incriminate me. He returns, go to the police headquarters to go and um, you know, verify the vehicle and take it. He says he's been told that the cars should not be given to him. And so as we speak, the cars are still in a custody of the police. He wants them back. Uh, other than that, he's going to take legal action. Um, and, and of course, uh, James Ajeling Bating also suffered the same fate. His car is still seized. I saw a post on Facebook on his wall. 
uh, saying that the car should be returned. He's bought the car, he's registered it, he's, uh, he has documents to back it. Um, why are we doing this? Thank you very much, Samson. If indeed the report we are hearing that Ejinim um, Boateng's residence also was raided and some cars were taken away from his home, I am not too sure the presidency sanctioned that action. I can speak to Kofi Adam's case. Okay, let's hear The it. presidency did not order the seizure of those cars. So why is the police holding on to the vehicle? But of course, you are telling me Kofi Adam is saying the police should hold on because yeah, he no. So he went to take it, and the, the instruction is that so, he gone is that you know the interesting thing. I have seen one of the pickups, which has it either engraved or embossed. Charles's number, mm -hmm. tempered with. I saw it. Kofi Adam says? Yes, one of the pickups in circulation. I saw it myself. So the question is that, really, legitimately, Kofi Adams owns those cars. And after they read, some of the cars have had their vehicle Charles's numbers tempered with. However, I must say... I mean, after the raid? No. After the raid, of course, the cars could only be seen after the raid. Okay. So, 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 so the, it wasn't tempered after the raid. My point allegedly. is allegedly the cars. We saw those cars, but for the fact that the raid occurred, so you are you alleging, you are alleging those cars. You are alleging that since the raid, since that the, the cars raid. became available to the I national security, or whatever it is, I have you are verifying and seeing that one. But that, that is the, the same allegation that Obri Boying made that now he's being threatened with legal suit. So you you must have the evidence to back that or redraw it. Like I'm speaking to you because that's a that's a criminal accusation you're making against it. Evans, it makes the matter simpler, and we are going to be spared the difficulty and the headache of coming to discuss car or cars when we have a nation to govern. So my position is that the minister for, uh, 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 I mean, the, the uh, Honorable Kandapa, we are told, has spoken to Kofi Adam. He says he's call, he called him, and then he says, return those cars. And he is still insisting the cars have been taken in my absence, so keep them until I arrive. I was thinking that matter or that particular posture of the minister should have introduced finality to that matter because that was an outright condemnation of mm -hmm. what the young men went to do. Mm -hmm. It was not in good taste when some years ago Nanado Dankwa Ekufado's car too. was snatched from that him, same style. later returned and mm -hmm. apologized. Yeah. It was not in good taste when the Barclays Bank manager's car was snatched for him because it was thought of as one of the state vehicles. Mm. It certainly was not in good taste if that action was not sanctioned by the presidency, that Kofi Adam's residence was raided and the cars were retrieved. I am hoping that is the more reason why the minister of the sector asked the cars to be returned. But if indeed it turns out to be true that the chances number of some of the vehicles have been tempered with, I saw one. If that is true, then I'm thinking Kofi Adams and those who believe they saw the chances number of those cars being tempered with would have a perfect showdown <coughs> in court. Okay. So, so, so he said he is saying that he's going to go to court. Not you. I mean, it's interesting that you, you, you and Obi Bahin claim the chances them had. You, you want to add me to the? No, no, <laughs> because that's the same claim he made. That <laughs> and, he has and, not and sued me yet, so don't add me. No, but when you have made the claim. Me, when he asked me, I'll gladly join. No, no, but you have you've repeated the, the libelous claim. I see the the defamatory By default, claim. It makes me part of it. Uh, well, I will take you there. I've you noticed. see the cast, and then no, I, you don't I, want to be part of it. I'm not an expert to determine when the chances them anyway, have been. But the bottom line, and you are not either. That's why you need to be cautious in making claims that you. But if there is an verified. engraved set of numbers and it's been tempered. Okay, I don't, don't, don't want us to be labeled that because it's a case that might end up Absolutely. in court. So, so that is my I don't difficulty. Want to, I don't want to, what uh, I am saying is that, to have Evans, the bottom, line, the bottom line is that I think as a nation, I am happy and I was happier with the introduction of the transition law that clearly spells out the processes in the whole handing over and the transition process so that we do this whole handing over in a tidier manner compared to what we have done previously. Mm. My honorable member here talked about the fact that MPP members did not show up at His Excellency John Mahamas swearing in on 2012, after the 2012 election. I suggest a few. A few? Yeah. You, they were even lucky, a few turned up. We were yeah. contesting the election's results. Did we need to show up at the president's swearing in to give credence to the presidency okay. and to confer legitimacy on the presidency? or the elections, which outcome were in court contesting, we didn't need to be there. So that is the explanation. Even okay. independence. You don't we know. didn't need to be there because Even that is the explanation. Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado and the party chairman then 
together with Dr. Baumia, were in court contesting the election's results. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me quickly put this day. out, and then I'll, I'll come to you, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Samson just sent me this, because he's a lawyer for um, Kofi Adams. And in the letter that uh, they wrote to the IGP, it was mentioned in it, and it was published uh, in the press subsequently. In the letter, they mentioned that when they went to retrieve the vehicles from the uh, custody of the police, they were told that Mr. Lord Comey, who I think is the director of operations at the presidency, had instructed that the vehicles should not be, be released to Mr. Adams. He sent me this. says, apparently, Lord Comey never wrote or gave any instructions to the police to detain the vehicles as claimed by the deputy director, CID, Mr. Kofi, uh, when Kofi went to inspect and pick the cars. Lord denies completely, and I have no reason to doubt him. It turns out, police rather wrote to his office to ask to confirm if those vehicles are part of those missing. Strangely, this is a week, this is a week after a clear order by the National Security uh, Minister uh, for the return of those vehicles to Kofi, which orders were complied with. What could be at play at the level of the police, even in face of the requisite documentation, supply them? But uh, that's why the calls are there. Uh, he says, he, uh, Lord Comey called me himself. He called his officers in my presence uh, to ask if any of them had written to police as claimed by the deputy director, CID. And they were emphatic. They had, uh, they had done nothing like that. But it's police that rather wrote to them. So that's clarity on, on that particular matter. Uh, Mr. Jumpo. Yes, um, going back mm. to the issue that yes. raised um, a lot of tension between the two <laughs> combatants here. <Yeah. laughs> I think um, poor people tend to be extravagant, and poor nations also sometimes you know, demonstrate that same characteristic, extravagance. Um, if you read Michael P. Todaro, he tried to understand how the now developed countries were behaving when they were in our status as developing countries. And one point he makes that they were not extravagant at all. And so I, I want to caution, I think Mr. Jantua made that note and I want to reiterate it, that um, 200 missing, allegedly missing vehicles should not be used as a license to procure new vehicles. The presidency, as a nation, we must accept. Is there there's nothing wrong if the president decides to buy new vehicles? Well, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is if he decides. If he decides. He if the need arises, the need arises. Yes. Yes. and he decides so to get a new car, what because in, in, the in drafting the presidential transition act, I remember there was a principle that we, we said should also go into that bill, uh, that bill. That the presidency, we must learn as a nation to accept the presidency as is. Otherwise, we always have a practice and tendency of procuring new things, new vehicles, any time there is a change of vehicle. Even when there are vehicles that are relatively new that could be used, um, successive governments have the penchant of just abandoning those vehicles and procuring new ones. I think it's a needless dissipation of state resources. Let's learn from those who are developed. Um, um, George Bush used the beast. Clinton used the beast, Obama used the beast, I'm sure Trump is Trump using will the, use beast. the beast. And so let us um, have um, in mind the practice, uh, a guard against the practice of always throwing away you know, money simply because um, a new government you know, have come in. And then also the practice of seizure, public seizure of vehicles in an uncoordinated manner also undermines the whole spirit of the Presidential Transition Act. Um, if indeed First of all, why should you go away with a public vehicle if um, um, your party is not, you know, your government is, you know, been overthrown? I think it's not the best. And then also, if something like that happens, um, there are ways and means. There are there are documented ways that um, um, those vehicles or those public property could be retrieved if you read uh, the transition law. And so, seizing them in an uncoordinated manner contribute to the polarization you know, within the body politic. And let me tell you that the main idea for introducing the Presidential Transition Act was to deal with polarization within the body politic. We've always argued that Ghanaians, any time there is a change of government, are unable to distinguish between a change of government and overthrow of, go and overthrow of government. You two are buying and Yasas are buying. There's always um, a confusion between that. If it is um, a change of government, then there are 
duly recognized processes are spelled out in the Presidential Transition Act regarding how um, public assets could be retrieved. And so that going, storming people's houses and then um, seizing vehicles and, and, and all that would always bring about uh, bitterness within the body politic. And um, the, like I said earlier, the, the mandate that has been reposed in this particular um, government is so huge, the goodwill is there, and so we cannot afford to have a, a disunited um, nation again. All Ghanaians are expected to do their best in rallying behind the government so that it can also um, uh, prosecute its um, ad agenda of you know, bringing about development. And so let things be done in a proper manner. The practice of equalizing, making reference to what has happened to the past and also wanting to do the same now, mm. for me, is counterproductive. Let us move on as, as, as a nation. It happened in the NDC time where the moment they won, and people went about seizing everything, public like latrines, um, so vehicles, and all that. And then it is happening now. Yeah. Um, but I think um, we know better as a nation, and particularly the MPP. Uh, they always pride themselves of having the men. Okay, so if you have the men and they are very refined and all that, they should be able to stand their gr grounds and speak to their followers. Yeah. That, I mean, some of these things, you cannot um, see them as a characteristic of, of a government that claims to have, a, to have the men and yeah. all that. So l let the right thing um, be done. Otherwise, then some of us, um, it leaves us always disappointed. And you cannot trust politicians because the very things that politicians tend to critique or criticize when they are in opposition. They get into power, they repeat the same thing, and sometimes they even worsen the situation. I don't foresee or I don't expect um, the MPP government to be doing the very things that um, it criticized when it was in opposition. They know better. They know the right thing. Let them focus. If, you, if for some reason some public, public vehicles would have to be retrieved and all that, I'm happy he's saying that the chief of staff has set up a committee to look into and that. And the, and Let they, them do they, they it in a very professional manner without the fanfare, without distracting the attention. I don't expect. I want us to talk about national service and, of course, other key yeah key issues that have um, been thrown to us in, yeah. Yeah, within the body politic over the last yeah. you know, week. We'll talk and about let, that let, very let us not waste time uh, on, Mr. Jantua, on, on, on this four seizures. A brief comment on the Kofi Adams, uh, Ajinim Boateng, others uh, that have suffered that fate over the last few days. Kofi Adams fighting it. Do you think legitimately so? If I heard you right, did you indicate that the uh, Lord Kome yeah. and some others have indicated that they did they, not. They did not instruct the police okay. not to release a vehicle. Okay. That's, that's according to some. And that did, they, right did they instruct the cars to be taken from his house? Were they no. So, no. if that is the case, the MPP should nip in the bud all these illegal seizures going on by their supporters. They should nip it in the bud. It is one thing they should start working on ASAP. Mm. Because it's going to inconvenience people, it's going to make people apprehensive, it's going to bring some kind of 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 of, of verve in the in, in, in our society yeah. that people will not trust the government. So they should nip it in the bud. Secondly, talking about uh, identifying assets, we should let the laws work. The um, declaration of assets. It's under Article 286 of the 1992 Constitution. Call them. You declare your assets. You declared your assets. Let's see. You're not out of office. Let's see. So what if you we declared declare one vehicle, e exactly. You're going to have five. Five. Tell us how you got okay. that vehicle. Apart from that, use DVLA. They have the registration and documents of every vehicle in this country hopefully hopefully and what i'm trying to drive out is i drive out to that let's use the law yeah, and let the institutions work let the institutions work even if as a governing party you see certain things that are not right use the law go to the institutions because by so, do, so doing you are strengthening those institutions and you are you are giving the people the chance to have confidence in those institutions now i received uh, what do you call it, um, uh, 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 text as we were uh. Uh, talking from a citizen of Ghana. And if you may permit me to read it. He says, Kwame, please add that the MPP should not misinterpret their mandate. 
the over one million votes were were not all MPP card bearers, but people who dislike the ways of governance, these ways of governance. If vehicles are missing, publish the details and leave it to the police. The MPP should not take the electorate for granted. Parties lose elections way ahead of the polls. They should focus on delivering their manifesto promises. A word to the wise is enough. Mr. Lowe. Well, uh, interesting uh, uh, feed. Are you, are you in a possession of any government vehicle? I've never worked in government. I've been a humble servant. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, parliamentary. Yeah, yeah, but parliamentary. I don't work in government service. Yeah. Uh, they are part of government. Oh, no, no. I, I serve the. Uh, I, I hum, I'm a humble servant. part of the executive. Of, uh, 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 yeah, but it's part of government. Yeah, but three arms of government. Yes, but I mean, we are talking about executive essentially. I'm okay, so you're not, you're not part of the executive. <laughs> but let me just say that. None of the cars came from parliament. No, 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 the one I have, I bought myself. And I paid. <laughs> <laughs> so, just but, in case you have the documents. <laughs> yeah, I do. You need to keep it in your car. Yeah, it's it's yeah, safer yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, it in your car. I don't need to keep it in my car. Everybody knows that I've had that vehicle many years ago. Before you go on, the transition amendment bill, please. President, assent to it and let's gazette it so that we can. No, use no, it. Um, the transition act. The, the amendment. amendment. The amendment. The amendment. No, no, no. no those amendments. Do I? They've been. They've been. They've been. Those amendments, those amendments right, were yeah. quite minor. I think yeah. with the implementation of the of the act, there's been several yeah. other challenges that must all be factored into it. Those they were. They were quite okay. very, 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 very. Let, minor let, let me say lower this up. So, so very simple. I, I, I think that from all the information we have. I want my brother to understand that there are missing vehicles. They remain that in vehicles you cannot account for. Yeah. I just received a text message also from somebody who works at Mass Law. He said, look, I'm still an officer of the organization. So I drive a car under the office of the president. Mm. But you can be sure that all those cars would have been listed because we are handing over. So there are many people driving government cars. They continue to be doing government work. And that is why we need to painstakingly go through the process to identify where the vehicles are. And we should stop this jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Achieve. Now with Kofi Adams, mm -hmm. I am beginning to look at it differently. If indeed no report has been made by Lord Connie, and they are saying that indeed the raid on uh, Kofi Adams' house and the vehicle yeah. taking was not sanctioned by, no sanctioned by him, then people are stolen. Mm. And that <laughs> we expect that the police, whoever <coughs> sent the vehicles to them, should arrest that fellow and prosecute that person. Because if you come to my house and take and my take property. And take my vehicles against it, then you are a thief. <laughs> a plain thief. No, they went with arms, so they might Please, be I am best. saying that even in whoever they are, whether they are security officers or they are thieves. And so we want to see the state taking action against them. Whilst Kofi Adams decides to use the civil remedies. And that is where I want. And all those people who have been taking cars without authorization. If you are not a product of, or you are, it's not by virtue of the tax force that has been set up, then you are a thief. Mm. And so all those people, uh, there is one Abronia and all those jokers who are walking around, they should be arrested <laughs> and yeah. put behind bars for stealing. Okay. Now with uh, Obri Yeboa and Nana Obri Yeboa, yeah. you see, for me, I believe that we are talking after the facts. What shows that they didn't, they are not the ones who went scratching chassis, uh, cleaning, to, attempting to clean chassis just to make a case. Now you are going into uh, no, yeah, I'm telling you. Yes, yes. I am saying that yes, they yes, should go and check problems. But I mean, they are saying that we are, they are, because I understand from what I'm saying that documents have been submitted to the police yeah. and they are found to be genuine documents. Yeah. So who attempted to uh, uh, clean uh, off these numbers? Those who are saying it, those who were conjecturing that they found out after the vehicle has been taken, they should also be questioned. They should all be brought into the ambit of thieves and prosecuted. <laughs> that okay. is the best way to resolve this thing and nap this nonsense in its bag. Mr. Lowe, thank you very much. So on Newsfile on Joy 99.7 FM, also on your uh, Joy News channel on Multi TV, uh, a number of you still sending your message. I'll be sharing a number of them with you very briefly. But um, also this week, a big story about national service also broke. And it's so, you know, related to the transition process, really. Um, we, we learned that, uh, what, all national service staff who were recruited in, in December have been, have been, have been sacked. Uh, they've been asked, they've withdrawn the recruitment. Uh, we, are, we understand that um, from what Nana B, the deputy director of NSS, tells us that uh, I don't know, it will open up that process up for them, for them to, 
for them to for them to reapply and be re-engaged because the process that led to the recruitment itself was flawed legally. Um, uh, David, I mean, the, the key question is, aren't you violating the rights of these national service staff by terminating the appointment when, well, from the former NSS boss, Mr. Presa White, Dr. Presa White, the legal processes were followed in recruiting them. Thank you very much, Evans. We just have brief, brief comments on this. We want to move on to the $13.9 million mansion story. And then we'll also come back to the transition, uh, vetting processes where the NSS ministerial issues came up. And then we'll wrap up. Yes. Evans, national service. Organizations have institutional frameworks with which they recruit, train, and retain staff to fulfill the organization's human resource needs. Mm. We know there is a public service commission. Most of the instances, they do recruitment or they sanction internal employment. You do not just have to wake up one morning and say, I think this department is understaffed. Then you put in people. You must even get clearance and approval from the Ministry of Finance, who will be the paying authority. We know on authority that way back in 2015, 2016, the Honorable Kwesa White, who is the former executive director of the NSS, after he took over and the issue of the scandals rock the whole NSS outfit, there was the need for certain volunteers and other department of the service to be staffed. They had run out of human resource for certain departments. So he officially sought approval from the board to recruit certain 34 individuals and later on 173 individuals, in all totaling 207. The question is, there is an administrator at the National Service Secretariat. They refer to him as the senior member over there, a reverend minister, Mr. Andam. He petitioned the Public Service Commission mm -hmm. against the decision of the Chief Executive Officer to recruit 207 people to fulfill the organization's human resource needs. And you know one interesting thing? Conventionally, the NSS from 1989, when they started employing people permanently, have never outsourced their HR function to any organization. For the first time in the history of the HR practice of the National Service Secretariat, Dr. Kwesa White outsourced that HR component of recruiting people into the organization to an organization called Jomelo and Associates. Right. And they charged the NSS 100,000 Ghana cities. There is an HR department at the National Service Secretariat. We are told the HR department is inactive and is dormant. In my estimation, from my little experience as an HR practitioner, I know. Did you say $100,000? Ghana cities. Ah, okay. I know 100,000 <laughs> Ghana cities can build the human resource capacity of the HR department of NSS. You can train, you can retain, and you can re recruit, select, and then train. 100,000 Ghana cities. What kind of training and development can you not give to the Human Resource Department of NSS, but we spent NSS 100,000 Ghana cities to outsource recruitment of 207 staff to a private company known as Jomelu and Associates. So, the man petitioned the Public Service Commission, who later on wrote and told Mr. White, Doctor, please halt <laughs> the processes of recruitment that you have outsourced until we sit on the petition by the administrator. He says, I have written to the finance department who have given me the clearance. The board of NSS has also given me clearance, so I will proceed. And he proceeded. You know what happened? These men had their appointment letters given to them on the 15th of January, when Dr. Kwesa White himself had exited, because we were in the transition period. This year? This year. 26, I mean, 2017. January 2017 was when these 207 men and women had their Appointment letters. And you allowed it to happen. Because the you new, <laughs> the new NSS boss 
had not taken over yet. Mm -hmm. And remember, there was a second petition by the same director of administration at the NSS, the Reverend Adam. He pursued the matter further and said, in any case, the NSS has conventionally, they recruit from within before looking outside. And the NSS had over thousands of volunteers who were working voluntarily for the commission or for the secretariat. So if indeed we have run out of human resource within a specific department in the NSS, common sense had it that one would think of recruiting internally first before going outside the, old, uh, the enclave of the organization. But when it was outsourced to Jamelu and Associates and paid 100,000 cities to them, they recruited from uh, outside. 100,000, I heard the power. Sorry, 100,000 cities. <laughs> 100,000 cities, I heard the power. You use a billion to recruit 207 people? Uh, I have an outfit. When you have an internal HR department, when you have existing volunteers, a billion old Ghana cities. A billion old Ghana cities. Uh -huh. So really, these are issues that are a little bit convoluted and ask a lot of questions. So the second petition was sat on by the, the, the Public Service Commission. And it was ruled by the Public Service Commission that there is no way the recruitment and selection process that had been outsourced must stay. So they ruled after 15th January admission, I mean appointment letters, mm -hmm. and said, let the appointment be terminated. So immediately the new CEO took, I mean the chief executive of the carried out that, that, that quickly. Okay. They implemented it, they wrote to the sector minister, Dr. Majipoku Prempe, the sector minister quickly assented to it and advised professionally that immediately those appointments must be terminated. I am happy they have had the appointment terminated, but the process of recruitment and selection to fulfill those HR needs in NSS has not been tampered with or has not been halted. But what they are saying is the processes were wrong and you can't have a justified end when the means were unethical. Question. Before already spent 100,000 cities. Absolutely. So my taxpayer's money has gone down the drain. So, the so is it is enough to simply just terminate and recruit? Because you're going to recruit again. Or why don't, are we going to punish somebody? This is a very interesting question you have asked. How long can we continue toying with the career development of these young chaps? We recruit them through the back door in an illegal manner, then when the appointment are terminated, psychologically you traumatize these young men because they go home, then the next time the cost component you are talking about, 100,000 Ghana cities mm. outsourced to a private So, so question, are we going so to punish somebody? my point is, we will not sit down for this practice of people recruiting a few days before they exit. Mm -hmm. Then you just let them go off the hook. Yeah, I've, I get that point, but so are we going to punish somebody? We must call somebody to come and account for why 100,000 Ghana cities is used to recruit. Illegally. And why illegally. Yeah. And why an HR department exists in NSS, and however, we needed to go out and outsource. So we can expect it. that former administrators of NSS will be held accountable for this. I will be happy. That we are not just going to say we've terminated, let's Evans. recruit again and just let it lie, but Evans. we're going to actually pursue this. And the mere fact punish. that we have succeeded in questioning the processes that led to the appointment gives us a better position to question who authorized that payment. Okay. People must be brought back to answer questions regarding the illegality that they perpetrated Mr. Law, in office. Mr. Law, Mr. Law, why did this happen? Well, why did this happen? I think that, very basic, I think that when a chief executive and his board of directors do an assessment of the organization and decides that they need to hire more people, they are entitled to it by law. Mm, but there's a process. Yes, and that there's nothing that has been pointed out as that the process has been circumvented. No, it has. Uh, please. You have to please go to come. the please. Public, please. public service I'm saying, that, I'm saying that. First, his major problem is that some... Uh, uh, is, one, is one of the problems. <laughs> yeah, he says that <laughs> some uh, organization uh, called Zomelo and Asus that were, were hired. Why? Standard practice in these days. We, the fact that 10 years ago the National Service was hiring without this kind of processes. If you want to enhance the quality of people that you shortlist to be approved by a public services commission, it doesn't kill you if you use professional consultants to do that work. And pay 100,000. It doesn't matter. It's not when, when you have an internal HR I'm department. I'm saying that if at that point you do not think that your, you, you think that maybe your internal HR, particularly when you are getting people from inside and outside. When they've always recruited for the service. I am saying that, you see, Let's not uh, say that they've always re recruited for the service. <coughs> I am saying that the board has a duty to decide how things are done. 
It is their duty, it's their uh, obligation. But what about when the rules are used, go to the public service I am commission. saying that the board has not said they were not going through the public service commission. They did it, because we've heard from the public service commission this week. Yes, that they were, they were side. I am saying that the board did not say. No, but that this week. Going. No, this week. Go, they, go, they and check, go and check again. They were not silent. But the evidence shows that they were not part before, of the process of recruitment. Before you were even given clearance, the process would have been audited by the Ministry of Finance. And they will satisfy themselves that this is free and proper. They remove in any case, the commission from this whole In any thing. case, in any case, for me, right, I am not worried that MPP has come and true to their nature and color, they've decided <laughs> to sack people. Oh. Oh, why? We know Ap Apollo very 4, very we unfair. know he's always been there. No, it's very fair. Very unfair. Uh, it's very fair. Five and days to exit they've done it. You Please, are I am saying that employing people we five days to exit. So, and don't forget that this process started way back in June. The process of recruitment started way back in June. All the relevant bodies were notified. Okay? We should see them. We look at the mandate of every organization in the process. Right? Public Services Commission is supposed to ensure that criteria is followed in terms of qualification. Eh? And that's their mandate. Mm -hmm. And yet we give it to a private And person. I'm saying that the private people were supposed to shortlist people whose appointment would now be submitted to Public Services But that commission. wasn't done, was it? I am saying that I am not, chief, uh, I'm not the executive, but to the best of my knowledge. The executive director was clear in his mind that he and his board did what the law expected them to do. If they have come and found out, that is why we are saying, okay, there are various options. One of the options is that the Labor Commission is there. They can petition. They can go to court. Yeah. You see, one of the things I have, attitude I have towards employment is that the law also says that you cannot force somebody to employ. At worst, you go only, <laughs> I mean, you, you only compensate. So if David As Asandi Yabua Came and, employed, uh, came and employed, uh, uh, employed in my organization, and I decide that I won't work with him again. He can go to space and come. If he goes to court, the remedy he will get, unless, of course, uh, 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 his rights, human rights are violated, mm -hmm. that they will ask for a reinstatement. But even that one, I can still decide that, look, I'll pay whatever fine I'm supposed to pay, and we'll move on. Like I keep saying, that duty is on their head. If they have come, and they decide that they are sucking people in the police, they are sucking people everywhere, sucking here, sucking there, sucking everywhere. Well, they are in government. It is their business. Like I said, some of us are not surprised. True to their nature. Okay. The people have various remedies. I'm sure they will take up those remedies. Mr. But Prof. please, let's not belittle the whole process by talking about the fact that in today's modern day administrative practice, I'm sure even some Joy FM. Uh, right, mm -hmm. Joy FM. You sometimes ask. Uh, uh, oh, I, I don't know about it. <laughs> but look, you know that entity. you know that the first recruitment that I had in my life when I was leaving School of Communication Studies was I would have I was supposed to have come to Joy, and then I opted to go to uh, 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 Sachi and Sachi. So I know the process, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that look, there is nothing wrong in today's practice, okay. modern day practice. Let me when you want a consultant to assist you hire the best people. So let, let, let me bring it. Let me pro, pro, use for example. A billion to recruit. From, from you, are 20, you are using twenty. You are using twenty. You are using twenty million. No, 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 not again, not again, not again, not again. You are using gentlemen. twenty million to let, let go in that game of. So, so on that same point, on that same point, I mean, so you are, you see, the propaganda must stop. The law does not does not see anything wrong with outsourcing the recruitment process at all. But in addition to that, there's another allegation about circumventing the laid down procedure for recruitment. Well, where do you stand? on this and you think that beyond just withdrawing a recruitment what else should happen well I, I am informed that I think section 16 of the NSS um, Act allows our sourcing um, or people um, the service to hire se um, service of, uh, of a consultant or advise the executive director regarding how you want to recruit but I have a problem with that section of the NSS Act I mean laws and acts of parliament are not sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. So if you have um, a, an HR department that cannot hire, then you have to scrap that department. You can't continue to keep people there 
who cannot do the work that they are expected to do and then you continue to pay them. And so I am not too comfortable with the mm -hmm. fact that we, um, the NSS um, boards had to outsource that, um, um, that, uh, the, the recruitment of over 200 national service you know, personnel. But more importantly, again, let's go back to the Presidential Transition Act. It says that one month to election, you should have given handing over notes. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's think about it fairly and objectively as a people of Ghana. Uh, if, you hand, if you write handing over notes and you submit, what are you supposed to do around the time that you've given handing over notes mm -hmm. and the time that um, you would really um, have a new president come in? Um, if you give a handing over notes and you go after that to recruit, uh, I mean, for me, it doesn't, technically, if you are being fair, the moment you give a handing over note, Everything should cease. it supposes that you should hold on. And if you would even go about doing anything, it must be done in consultation with those who are incoming. And if you don't do that, then you, you create a lot of bad blood between um, um, the outgoing president and then the incoming president. So it's something that we have to look at as a nation. And I'm not surprised because the MPP made it clear that when they come in, they will look into all those recruitments and all that. So maybe as a nation, we have to look at the Transition Act again. Between the time that people submit handing over notes and the time that a new government takes office, what should the outgoing government be doing? What are the things that our going government should be able to do, and what are some of the things that the going government shouldn't be able to do? It is something key that we must agree upon as a nation. But if you look at the spirit behind um, the fact that people, our going government, will have to write handing over notes and submit to the incoming government, then it presupposes that once handing over notes are written, you cannot strict to sense to embark on any major decision that will sort of force or bind, tie the hands of the incoming government. I am not too happy um, with the fact that people who have been recruited have been asked to go home. They are also Ghanaians. But the point is also that the, the writing must be done as a nation. Um, you cannot, I, I think um, the, 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 the M NDC government um, complained bitterly when it's like they were forced to implement the single spine around the tail end of the yeah. of the administration of the of the uh, of, of the Kufo administration, and um, they are also doing the same thing now. I mean, forcing the incoming government to also do things that it may not have even thought about. I mean, we should think about these things dispassionately as a nation. I mean, we have a, we have an act that governs transition within the period of handing over notes and the period that. Um, um, the new government is sworn in to take over. What should outgoing government be doing? So that you wouldn't, you wouldn't have situations where outgoing government may be doing things that may, the new government may come in to say that, well, we are not That's supporting it and all that. It is, it is something that does not Mr. Jones, so what do help do with afford this much as a nation. Let me put the cat amongst the pigeons mm -hmm. and ask this question. From the point of transition, where you've written your transition notes, handed it over, till 7th January, if the country is attacked, who heads it? Who is the, is the incumbent president? The incumbent president heads it. Yeah? It's not the president-elect who now head it because he wouldn't have been sworn in. So although he has handed over his notes, he still has the mandate till the new president comes in he still has the mandate to rule this country. So in the exercise of that mandate, if major decisions are taken, how are they captured? How are they going to be captured in the handing over notes that are supposed to have been submitted one month I, to I, the election? I, I agree with you in the sense that there's a gray area as to what happens within that month of yeah. handing over. Yeah, that's something we There's a gray area to. we have yeah. to look at. Should, should the NSS have recruited in that period? and giving them letters in, in January. Well, I think they want what, to recruit. What, I think they should what, have, this what, recruitment what should what have been done long the ago. Say? Absolutely. It should have been done. You what see, I'm sorry say? to cut you, but you see, you do not want to create an impression as if you are, you, you have, an ulterior motive. motive. What was John Muhammad doing when um, Shrad became vacant, the anabosman time? That's right. Okay, what was he doing when Haro, um, Charlotte Osei was moved from NCC to go ahead there, um, the, the EC? I mean, these were times that they, they were, I mean, 
he could have appointed long ago so that mm. we wouldn't have gone yeah. through all Let, this. But the moment you, you wait yeah. till you you wait till the dying minute to hurry through these processes, he raises you questions about the motive. That you have some but, but back to, to the NSS subject, this you particular see, one. You see, Evans, the, the, what, the recruits what, have been let go. What Prof is saying ties into this NSS yeah. thing. We we have to stop this thing about we are putting the incoming government in a certain uh, 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 trance or locking them up. So that when they come in, they also find it difficult to now do what they have to do because of what we've done just before we exited. Evans, this country, if something happens here, do you have anywhere to go? No. Does anybody around this table <laughs> no. have anywhere to go? No. Are we not all Ghanaians? Yeah. Are we not all looking for a governance that would make us comfortable? The end point is, Evans, you can live here. You can decide to go to the beer spots just across the road, mm -hmm. take some small <coughs> beer. You can pay your child school fees. You can pay your, your, your if your wife is pregnant, you can do all that. And so I don't see this kind of, OK, we are coming out of government, so we have to do things hurriedly. As Prof said, what were we doing sitting there six months before we were going to hand over? Yeah. Not uh, uh, hiring these Because you see, it's a disservice to those who have been hired. What do they know? So far as they're concerned, yeah. they put in the application. Innocent ones caught exactly. in this. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we are saying all those people who have been hired NDC. are NDC. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But then I would have thought, looking at those who have been hired, that we, we, we say to ourselves, we cannot disenfranchise them. It was not their fault. Let them stay in and take the people who are responsible for running that institution to task. I'm alarmed by paying, although Prof has read the law, that they have the right to do it. But at what point do they have the right to do it? If their, their, their HR is not <coughs> working, do they not suck everybody in the HR and get professionals in there to do the job? Mm -hmm. And in so Instead of keeping them there exactly, and paying them. Exactly, instead of keeping them there <laughs> and paying them. It's a needless Isn't dissipation of uh, public resources. So we should try, <laughs> we should try to work them. together and make sure that the institutions that we run and th this is my crux. The institutions that we run, the people of this country have trust in those institutions. If you don't when trust you, them, let them go. When you go to the UK today, or you go to any of these developed countries you like to compare ourselves to, you do not need to go and see the president or the prime minister to get things done. You know the institutions work. Yeah. You go to the police, you report, you know it works. Yeah, you, go fact, to the, you go to the hospital. Obama makes a very famous thing. He said, when he gets to his desk, he knows it's impossible. You, look, in the UK. It was not impossible. Listen, it will never listen, get to him. In the, UK <laughs> today, in the UK today, before you go and see your doctor at the surgery, yeah. you have to book an appointment. Yeah, go to see the GP. The you GP. know what they've done. Yeah. You know what they've done. They have an emergency casualty unit that even if a mosquito has bitten you, you can go there and they'll look after you. You don't have to book at your hospital. But there's this unit in a different hospital where people who have emergencies can just go and be looked, look, looked at, looked after. We need to be able to work together as a country. It's only Ghana we have. Look, I'm on the NDPC, and we've just finished the infrastructural plan of the NDPC. I say, when you read that document, hmm, you ask yourself, where was Ghana? Yeah. Things that we should have done. 20, 30 years ago. You're not thinking about doing them. You're not thinking about doing them. You're not thinking about doing them. You're not thinking about, exactly. doing, not thinking about yeah. doing them. And so I'm saying, yes, MPP has come into power. A new party has come into power. Let's work together. Okay. NBC, don't try and put the MPP on the back foot and say, okay, we are creating all these for you to come and be because yeah. you did it to okay. us. It won't Th help. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jantua. And we want to take um, another break very shortly. When we return, a brief uh, comments on uh, $13.9 million mansion setting mansion that uh, uh, has become so controversial. This week, further developments came up. Um, first was the uh, dropping of that document by Joseph Sewell and KTR. That pulled a figure at 3.5 million. And then we got another document, uh, also uh, submitted by CONSA, uh, the contractors building that particular facility, uh, confirming the earlier figure that you had here on news file last week uh, put out by Nana Komiya that the figure is indeed 13.9 million. And in fact, if you read that constant document, when this whole building is done, we could actually be paying 16, in excess of $16 million, because that 
13.9 million dollars. Does not include VAT. So when the VAT is paid on top of that, we are talking about 16 plus million dollars. We'll discuss that when we return. There's money in this town.